Hello, welcome to Kingdom Encounter. Thank you so much for joining me for today's session. If you're joining this broadcast for the first time, I would like to say a special welcome to you. Today, we are looking at a very important subject that's been a real burden on my heart. And I'm really praying that the Holy Spirit will help me to communicate this message the way it's meant to be communicated. You see, we are looking at a very important subject, the reality of heaven and hell. You see, the reason that it appears as if God doesn't exist, people are just getting on with their lives, doing what they like, is because of the patience and the long-suffering of God. You know, the Bible says in John 3, <coughs> excuse me, for God so loved the world, this very, very popular, famous passage of scripture, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, <coughs> excuse me, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see, <coughs> excuse me, God does not want anybody to perish. And that is why he has been patient and long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and be saved. So we can, you know, we cannot take the patience of God for granted. You see so much evil, so much happening around us. And it's as, it's as if, oh, nobody is going to be, be held accountable for their actions. It's not true. Today, there is, you know, especially in Africa, everybody claims to be a Christian. You know, we all speak Christianese. You know, we are all born again. And uh, the fact that we go to church, go to fellowship, does not mean that <laughs> we are guaranteed. You see, we are looking at the reality of heaven and hell. Look at what Jesus says here. This is one of those passages of scripture that really, really challenges me and helps me to examine my life all the time. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow, that is really, really serious. It says, Many will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Unbelievers don't cast out demons. Unbelievers don't prophesy. Unbelie unbelievers do not do miracles in the name of Jesus. They don't care. So that means that this passage of scripture is for us who claim to be children of God, who are, who are meant to be born again. It says, it's not, doesn't mean that because we are all saying, Lord, Lord, we are guaranteed. That's why we, you know, it says in Lamentations, we are to examine our ways and ensure, it says, look at what Jesus said here in, in Matthew 5, 17. It says, don't think that I, have, I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill for assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or tittle of will by no means pass from the law 
till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of these of this one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. And we know that Jesus had issues with the Pharisees. And he's saying that our own righteousness must exceed theirs. So remember, we're not talking about righteousness that is based on good works. Because the Bible already tells us that our self-righteousness is as filthy rags before God. It's not our self-righteousness. It's a righteousness based on our relationship with God, on working with God. And so some of us Christians think, oh, because we are born again, yes, Jesus has done away with the Lord. That passage of scripture we just looked at says, no, Christ is a fulfillment. Because when we are born again, the Bible says we become new creatures in Christ. He inputs on us his own righteousness, not our own self-righteousness. And so, and because of that, we, we, we have already believed. He said, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So when we have confess our sins, we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we automatically become children of God. But then, it doesn't end there. Say we are his ambassadors. We are in the world. We are not of the world. We are here to represent his kingdom. And as such, there is a great demand on us to do the commandments of God. That's why it says, not all who calls me Lord, but only those who do the will of my Father. And what is the will of his Father? That none should perish. That we are to Share the gospel with those who need to know about it. See, he left us with a command to go. I've been sharing this. If you have not seen any of my past uh, broadcasts, please go. They are there on YouTube. They are there on my Facebook page. Please go and check them out. So we have not been saved to keep the message to ourselves. But we are there to encourage others to be saved. He says, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For if we confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It says, for with the heart one believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, God does not discriminate. This message of salvation is for everyone, whosoever. Whether you are white or black, red or whatever the color of your skin, whatever your status, whatever your position in this world, whether you are rich or poor, whatever it is, this message of salvation is for everyone. Whosoever means whosoever. Okay? But the thing is that, when we believe, we don't keep it to ourselves. And that is why we have this assignment. It says, how, how? How can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? So we are the ones sent to go and tell them, to warn them. If we don't, how will they hear? Remember, Jesus is our model. See, the Bible says in Matthew 9, 35 to 38, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and disease among the people. You see, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Beloved, if you are watching this, we go about, and you are not moved with compassion. We don't look see people on their way to hell. Do you know that everybody that is not saved, whether it is your friend, your husband, your wife, your child, your brother, your sister, 
anybody who is not saved is on his way to hell. And God did not create hell for anybody. So we really need to pray for God to give us a heart of compassion. A heart of compassion that we will be moved like Jesus. When we see the multitude, that we, we will be touched and begin to pray for God to help us. Look at Jesus. The multitudes, he saw them like sheep having no shepherd. And we are not there. Every day we go out, we meet people. And he wants us also to be moved with the same compassion that he had. You know, that we will reach out with people with the same message of, of compassion. That when we see people, our neighbors, friends, I remember many years ago, the reality dawned on me that my family members who were not saved were on their way to hell. I began to fast every Friday, set that day aside to pray, to intercede for my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, because by the grace of God, I was the first person to receive Jesus in my family. And then I knew that if I didn't pray for them, and I didn't have the opportunity to share the gospel with them. I remember those days, my mom of blessed memory, she, people used to mock me. She used to say to me, I took you to church as a child. You were baptized and confirmed and all that. I said, listen, this is not about being baptized or going to church. <laughs> going to church every Sunday doesn't make one a Christian. You have to take the step to be born again into the family of God. I had to start praying for my mom, my father, my brothers. And today, to the glory of God, I thank God that when my parents passed away, they were already believers. And so we know that I, I just knew that my dad, my mom today, I thank God because I know that they are with Jesus in heaven. Heaven is real. Hell is real. It's not a joke. If you have any loved one, if you are not moved in confession, if you are not burdened, <laughs> for your fam family members or friends, colleagues at work, neighbors. You have to pray for them. Take them on your heart. If you don't have somebody you are interceding for, there is something wrong. You have to pray for them and ask God to save their soul because hell is not meant for anybody you love. I always pray for my child. I say, God, no child of mine will go to hell. No child of mine will go to hell. Nobody you love should go to hell. Because hell is not meant for anybody. So we have to be moved with compassion. You see, today there are people who say, come, oh, see you tomorrow. Are you guaranteed tomorrow? The Bible says in James 4, 13 to 16, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Sometimes when I hear people say, see you tomorrow, see you next, I shudder. That is why when, they know, when I was at work, I remember an experience. We were at a, a, a management meeting at work a few years back when I was still in full-time employment. And our head of school was trying to arrange another meeting. You know, after, you know, the following week or something. And he said this. At the meeting, he said, as Elohim would say, God willing, and everybody laughed. And another Christian colleague who was there said to me later, I said, you see, your witness is bearing fruit. Because I never send any message to anybody about any meeting or appointment or anything without saying God willing. Because nobody knows tomorrow. This year alone, 2019, huh, from January, I can begin to count how many close friends of mine have passed on. This year, in just a few days ago, another professor friend of mine, another colleague, passed away. In fact, the funeral is in two weeks' time. 
life is so short. And so when people think that we have, we don't have eternity to do whatever we like. So if you have, a, if you're a believer and you have any friend that is not saved, you don't want anybody's blood to be on your head. The Bible says in Ezekiel that 33 that God has made us watchmen. Watchmen, we're supposed to pray, intercede, have a burden. I personally try to carry tracks in my bag. These are some of the tracks I've written. I share them. I make sure I carry tracks in my in in my in my handbag anywhere I go. When I meet a, a, you know the woman at the counter after I've, my shopping, I give them a track if I don't have time to share with them. Because I mean, of course, you're on a queue. You 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 she hands over the t the receipt to you. You hand over a tra a track to her, a leaflet to her. So every opportunity we have, we know a lot of people who are saved through receiving gospel track messages like this. But the important thing is start with us really interceding for people, having a burden, having compassion. Hell is real. A relative of mine recently had, in fact, he passed away. He passed away, but God, he, they, they, they resuscitated him and he shared his experience. This is somebody close to me. And he pleaded with God when he was faced with the reality of hell. He said, wow, hell is real. And it's not meant for any human being. Remember, ah, this is what Jesus says in Revelations 22. He says, Behold, I am coming quick, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, come. Jesus is coming soon. He says, the dogs, and who are dogs? Dogs are those that bite and devour other people. Backbiters, haters of other people. Sorcerers, sexually immoral. If you're a believer, and <laughs> remember, committing murder it's not just using a knife or a gun to kill. If Even if the thought causes your heart, you, you have hatred in your heart for somebody else. You need to repent of it. Idolatry, so many things, anything that takes the place of God in your life is an idol. These days, may God deliver us from our phones, our mobile phones. They have become idols. Even in churches now, you see people now taking their phones to church. They're reading the, they're looking at the electronic Bible. And from that, they flip to their Facebook, Facebook page. They flip to their Instagram or WhatsApp. Idols. May God deliver us. The other day, this lady was in church. She was flipping, playing this game on, on, on her phone in church. God help us. God deliver us from idolatry. We think it's only when we when we have an idol that we put down and bow down to the things that distract us that take the place of God. Today, football. Some people say football is a religion. Anything that takes the place of God in your life, beloved, heaven is real. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Heaven is real. How would you like to receive that welcome from Jesus? Ah, heaven is real. So also is hell. We can never get the picture. We can only imagine what heaven looks like. The Bible says, I have not seen. We haven't seen. Nobody, we can only just imagine it. Just like heaven is real, hell is real. And every four seconds, people are dying and going to hell. But God did not create hell for anybody. That is why Jesus has not come. Because his long suffering doesn't want anybody to go to that place. So we need to, 
we need to begin to warn people, begin to pray, to intercede for people. God does not want anybody to go to hell. Please share this message. And if you're listening to this message and asking, okay, how can I, what do I need to do to be saved? Give your life to Jesus. Pray. It's as simple as A, B, C, D. A is to admit, to accept that you are a sinner. B is to believe that Jesus died for sin, for your sins. C is to confess your sins to God. Tell God you are sorry for everything you have done, all the wrong things you've done. D is to decide to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And if you're a believer and you are just living your life anyhow, today you have the opportunity to consecrate, rededicate yourself to God and mean business with God. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers have, he says, not all who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of the Father in heaven. May God help us. I pray that this message has blessed you. Remember what it says in Proverbs 11.30. He who wins souls is wise. A true witness delivers souls. Saves lives. If you are a, a child of God, a true witness, you show that you are wise by winning souls for Jesus. Don't let the year 2019 end without you winning one soul into the kingdom. I hope you have been blessed by this broadcast. Please share this message and visit my website, ngozukike.com. If you have not bought any of my books, you have the opportunity to do so. This book is life-changing. Are you a kingdom woman? If you haven't got your copy, please get it today. It's on Amazon. And on, on all the other retail outlets, you can order from any bookstore. Another one <clears throat> for the men is coming out shortly. Are you a kingdom man? Get your copy. You can also join me on Twitter or my watch my YouTube videos. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Please share this video, this broadcast with your friends. And join me again, same time next week, Sunday, 6 p.m. I pray that. God will help us to take our work with him seriously. God bless you. See you same time next week. Thank you for watching. And um, God help us to run this race.